1st, 2024. This is Scott Batten. How are you? Um, if you've been watching any of these walk and talks, which uh, no one watches, then um, you'll know that I've been um, doing a bunch of boat stuff and ship stuff. And I went on the Queen Mary and did a, did a walk and talk tour on the Queen Mary. Um, for some reason, I got completely obsessed with that ship and I just found myself every weekend going back to it. I think I went about, well, I went five weekends in a row and then went a couple other times on top of that. And uh, there's another boat nearby, another ship, which is behind me, a battleship, uh, called the USS Iowa. And I am in San Pedro, or San Pedro, depending on how you pronounce that word. And this is the USS Iowa. This is a, a ship that has been here at this location since 2012, and it is a World War II ship. It was uh, designed in the 1930s, built in the 1940s, deployed for World War II and a couple of other wars, uh, three in total, which we'll get into. Um, and I'm going to do a tour on this ship. This is, uh, as I said, it's been sitting here. It was unmothballed, as they sort of like to put it. And um, this is, uh, it, they've been, ever since it's been here, since 2012, they've been raising money to restore it, to, uh, to put it back together, um, to really make it look like the floating museum that it is. And I've now been on this boat several times as well. I, I've kind of lost count, to be honest with you. The Queen Mary is a little easier to go back to over and over and over again because they have they have uh, restaurants and there's just all there's all kinds of stuff to explore that is um, you know pretty cool that you can kind of go back to over and over and over again this one's a little more difficult for me anyway just because I don't understand I understand the nature of like a cruise ship I went on a cruise once when I was a kid I think 1979 or 1980 I went on a, a cruise to Alaska with my mom uh, but I don't really know much about battleships and I don't know much about warships and especially warships that were designed in the 1930s. So this ship is almost, you know, 100 years old, 90 years old, whatever it is. All of the technology is pretty old. It's, uh, I mean, it, it was used in what, the 19, uh, what, 1980s, 1990s? Uh, so a lot of the technology was was updated along the way, but you can still see that there's an enormous amount of 1930s, 1940s design. There's just no way to get around that. So I imagine that modern battleships, modern warships like this are very, very different. And I'd love to go on board one just to sort of see what that hundred year difference is to kind of check that out. But in the meantime, I'm going to take you on this tour. This is going to be a self-guided tour. And um, I don't think my battery is going to last that long. It takes about two hours to do this tour from start to finish. But uh, I'm going to try and go through it pretty quickly. Now, I had been coming here over and over and over again to really get all this information in my head. But it, there's just too much, and I don't understand it. And I, I, I just don't, I, I don't understand this context as well. So the tour is going to be, I'm going to get a lot of stuff wrong. I'm going to be inaccurate <laughs> about things. It's just not gelling in my head. I did do all of the tours that I could. I did the gun tour. You can see there's 60 inch guns right there. There's three turrets. Um, those are the largest guns ever built on a Navy vessel, those 60 inch guns. Um, they, they, what is it? They're 50 millimeter. I don't think that makes sense either. Um, projectiles that get shot out of it. There's all kinds of projectiles they can shoot out of it. Uh, I'm in San Pedro. It can, the range is that they can, basically what they say is they can fire a, uh, a projectile the size of a Volkswagen Beetle and have it hit Catalina. So Catalina is something like 25 miles away from here, maybe as much, much as 28 miles away. But those are the largest guns that have ever existed on a battleship. This battleship has also carried the, the most U.S. presidents on it, which I'll get into. Uh, this boat transported FDR to a meeting with Stalin and Churchill that was in, um, I think, Eastern Europe. 
I think is where it took place. But they have, they have all kinds of uh, pictures and stuff on board. So anyway, I've already paid for my ticket. The ticket is something like 29 bucks for the self-guided tour. The other tour, so oh, by the way, there's other tours that are, are really worth going to. They're more expensive, but um, they're maybe around, I don't know, 80 bucks or something like that, but worth every penny. There's a gun tour where, that they actually take you inside the turrets, or one of the turrets, that first one that you see right behind me. They, uh, they take you into that turret, inside of it, and you see how crazy that is, how harrowing and like how many people had to operate for one of those turrets to operate, just to, just to um, deploy one projectile, 77 people are inside of that turret, it, because it goes all the way down to the bottom of the, of the ship. There's multiple levels, and when those guns, when, those, uh, when that turret turns, it's all of those people also turn with it in all of the different levels that go all the way down. So it's 77 people just to fire, uh, you know, one projectile usually. And I think they fire them, you know, three at a time or maybe one at a time, whatever the, whatever's sort of needed. Um, uh, but the gun tour really takes you, takes you into parts of the boat that you just don't, you can't get other, in a, any other way. You can't get it on the generalized tour. There's an area in the middle of the boat they call Broadway that, they, that goes the entire length of the boat that they can transport projectiles and gunpowder and machinery and all kinds of stuff. But it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's a pretty spectacular, it's, and it's really hard to imagine, I'm trying to get this frame properly, it's really hard to imagine that what something like this was like in World War II. I can't imagine that it's anything like this now, where it would take 77 people to, to fire just one projectile. So um, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start this tour here for you. Sorry for the gargoyle glasses. I lost my other glasses. I don't know if you know, <laughs> you know where they are. Let me know. I really love those glasses. But um, it's pretty bright out here. And uh, the, I'm not going to be outside for most of it. There's also, there's, as they say on the tours, there's like a million ways to hurt yourself on this boat, on the ship. And uh, as you kind of get deeper into it, you can see what they mean. There's just, uh, there certainly are a lot of ways. So I'm going to be careful. You're climbing like really steep chairs and all kinds of stuff that, that uh, you, could, you could hurt yourself on. So it's going to be a little tricky with a, with a uh, camera here. But um, anyway, so I'm going to turn this around. I'm going up, what, the gangplank. This is, you can get all kinds of information from these guys. They'll sort of direct you in the right way. I'm going to keep my voice low for a second while I get around these people. There's all kinds of tours here. You can see that they have, you can go online. Hey there, you can go online. I've already paid for my ticket, so I'm just doing, I'm doing this video if that's, if that's cool. Um, you, there's all kinds of really cool tours that you can sign up for. You can go online and check out uh, everything that they have. Like I said, the gun tour is spectacular. You definitely want to do that one. This is the first turret there. Wait a minute. Oh, this is backwards for me. Okay, so that's the first turret. That's where you go in. I believe that's the turret you go in on the gun tour, which is pretty spectacular. I just need to make sure this is where you buy your tickets. I just want to make sure. I'm good, right? It's a $3 re-entry thing. Ah, Okay, um, I'd like to flip this around somehow. Uh, maybe I just won't look at my camera too much, but all right, so I'm at the front of the boat. I call it a boat, but people like to correct me and say it's a ship. So you'll know what I mean. We're friends here, right? Um, and you have like, there's just, there's guns and weapons and everything. Again, this has been like updated over the years to, um, be able to accommodate the different uh, wars, I guess, that this boat has been involved in, starting with World War II. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. It kind of looks like the sound levels you can. This is a windlass right here. And just check out the size of this anchor chain here. Now, the anchors are fully up, I believe. So I know the one on the um, starboard side, that's the right side, if you're looking at it, is um, that's fully up because it's, uh, it's twisted in on the side of the nose of the boat. Um, but the amount of machinery that it takes to actually pull up an anchor is so insane that right below me, there are massive, what, oil engines or whatever. You can see that these wheels here kind of control the windlass. And um, there's actually an engineering tour that you can take that I did take that, ta that brings you down. You actually go down this Let's see if I can, 
Yeah, I'm still not good with this camera. The, you can go down these, these steps here, and that takes you into the entire engine room uh, for the windlass, which is really cool. And again, well worth, well worth the expenditure. Again, we're on the nose of the boat. There's lots of other ships here. This is Port of uh, San Pedro. There's a, a fire station right there that we're hearing. Uh, those are, are tugboats. Those are fireboats, actually. And there's some um, uh, tall ships over there. Um, there's a bunch of stuff here in San Pedro, but I'm not going to really focus on that. Here's another s machine gun, I guess. I don't, I don't know. Uh, what kind of gun that is now. All right, so here's the big 60 inch guns here. This is turret number one that we're looking at. Let's see if I can get a little bit more straight on. That's turret number one. You can see turret number two behind it. There's the bridge above it. Um, and there's all sorts of radar and sonar and whatever other devices they use for tracking other. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about those cranes for just a second. We're going to stop for just a moment. So those in, in uh, <coughs> excuse me, in um, San Pedro, there it's these, this is where all the container ships come in and uh, oil tankers and so on. But container ships here uh, are offloaded and they're offloaded by these cranes. There's a couple of interesting things about these cranes because you're going to see them in the background as I'm doing this tour, the, each one of those is fully assembled overseas as you see them and they're shipped, they're shipped across the ocean like that and they're installed in these spaces. Each one of those costs $15 million and uh, the longshoremen of course use them to offload those big giant containers that you see, those evergreen and one and whatever. And uh, so those are $15 million each. And like, look at how many of them there are. I mean, they're everywhere now. I don't know if you can see way in the background, but they're everywhere. So it's 15 million, 15 million, 15 million for each one of those. Also, those were, I don't know if it was these, but ones like it probably in the Bay Area. Those are, um, those are what uh, the, the cranes are what George Lucas used for inspiration for the AT-ATs, for that design, if you know those uh, Empire Strikes Back vehicles. So anyway, that's what that is. All right, let's get back into the ship. This is World War, built after World War I. Well, designed in the 30s, built in the 40s. Ended up here <coughs> in, the, in 2012, uh, where it's been ever since. And a um, couple interesting things here. These are the different types of projectiles here. And also, we have, we have gunpowder. Now, that's the smokeless gunpowder right there. I'm just not going to be able to use this camera well. That's the smokeless gunpowder right there. I'm going to show you in a second how many of those have to go in, had to be loaded into one of these barrels, these gun barrels, uh, just to fire one of these massive projectiles. Um, that's also gunpowder. That's a gunpowder container, by the way, right there. And then that is a projectile. That's probably a dummy projectile because of the tip, I'm guessing. There's all kinds of different, different projectiles, they, and they kind of show you here on this chart all of the different, all of the different um, types of projectiles that they would shoot. So from the dummy, yeah, that's that flat tipped one there on the far left, uh, to what says W19 nuclear shell. And here's like armor piercing and whatever. So all of those can fit, well, one at a time, of course, into in, and be fired through these guns. <clears throat> and here's what a turret looks like. Like, look, so you're just seeing the top portion of that right there. But all of the projectiles and the gunpowder all of that has to be fed up into the where it's finally assembled into the cannon and then closed off and then fired. It's, it's also not fired from the turret. It's fired from inside of the, and then here's all the people. Like look at, look at like all the people that it takes. So you can see here, okay, that's how many people in the what top portion of the turret. And then there's the pan floor, the electric deck, the upper and lo lower projectile flat, and then the powder handling flat. So like you can see just how many people, and then that, that's total, those blue dots are people. So it's like 77 or something. Well, the numbers change a little bit. I keep hearing like 77. And, um, and so they have all these like different, all the different projectiles here. There's lots of little displays. This one I've never seen running, but there's a little TV screen here that they, I guess presumably have some documentary. Okay, now this is really interesting because Here's what it looks like. Here's when it's right when it's about to be fired. I can't even fit. Okay, there we go. I can fit this in my in my uh, camera here, but of course I don't know how to tilt and pan. Um, so that's what it looks like. So there's the projectile at the front that gets loaded in first, but then all of those other uh, cloth sort of 
cylindrical sacks are, that's all the gun, that's the smokeless gunpowder that gets put in. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six of those just to, um, just to fire off the one projectile. And that's, that's actually not all. There's, um, there's something that goes here at the end, which is called the primer, and that's a smaller container of actual black powder, I guess, smokeful <laughs> gunpowder. And then the rest of this is smokeless gunpowder in order to fire the one projectile out of one of these cannons here, just one. So each one, that, so just con consider like how much material needs to be stored on board if that's just one. You know, if they're just like blasting all day long or for, I don't know how, what a, what a battle is, but like, you know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I, I don't know. Like just think about how much artillery has to be, okay, I, I just need to make sure my mic is still working. I always have mic problems. You know, I had to have my, my uh, wireless mic uh, replaced, which was obnoxious. Okay, now sometimes this tour, they, they, they change where you can go. And there's this first part that takes you inside like a mess room or a mess hall. Um, and also if you have kids, there's this little, like that's Vicky, a dog named Vicky, which is actually a boy dog. His name is Victory and they shortened it to Vicky. And he was a dog that was on board for World War II. And then whenever they would, whenever they would come into port, he would like jump off and disappear and then come back before they left, according to the story. All right, I'm gonna keep my voice low here. But this is the mess hall. You can see that there's a big giant kitchen. Well, this is where you would wash all the dishes here. I'll show you the kitchen. It's the scullery. And this is the officer's galley. So this is, this is, this is the, the mess room, I guess the officer's mess room? I'm not sure. I guess that's what we would call this. But there's all kinds of pictures and memorabilia. There's stuff here that also, you probably remember, depending on how old you are, from school and your parents and stuff. This is the kind of boat like my dad, when he was in the reserves, would have been on. Uh, my grandfather, who enlisted in the Navy, he would have been on a ship like this. So all of this stuff would be very, very familiar to your parents, depending on how old you are. Okay, so here's the U this is the USS Iowa. Here's the World Voyages, and there's there's three wars, so this one was involved. I'm not gonna be able to get that too well. I also have the wide angle lens on. So it says World War II is all the white lines, Korean War is all the yellow, and then the Cold War era is the red. So you can, you can sort of see like all the voyages that the USS Iowa took across, really across the world. Um, this one from Norfolk, there's Norfolk to, where did they go? Somewhere over here, uh, was it not Naples? The Tehran, Con I think, was it the Tehran Conference? Somewhere, I think that's might have where it was, it took place. Um, but that's where uh, FDR and Stalin and Churchill met. And FDR was transported on this boat. So over to, uh, to Eastern Europe, I guess, is where that conference took place. So, but, um, Anyway, it's really, really cool. I want, and I kind of want to show, I know they have a photo of the, the guns being fired, which I, I sort of want to show you. Um, they just have lots of these kind of like beauty shots of the boat, of the ship, sorry. Okay, here's, here's an example. That's sort of what it looks like with those, with those big giant can. Those are, looks like all nine of them are firing at once. They got the light in the way there, so that's not helping you, is it? But that's what it looks like. Uh, when they're all being fired, all those big turrets. It's 1985, it says. Okay, it's a little hot in here. Um, let's see if I can flip this back around. So, um, sorry, I got my gargoyle glasses on top of my head. Um, anyway, here's another one. Let me flip that around. This is, that's kind of what it looks like when all the guns are being fired which is, that's amazing. So think about that, 77 people in each turret. So 77 people times three in order to accomplish that. And think about like all the resources that that takes. So 77 people per turret. Okay, so now you kind of start to go into, and by the way, they have these little, um, these little lips here. Whoops, can I get that? There we go. That's to help with any kind of water issues. Whoops, excuse me, sorry. 
Now these are some of the officer cabins. So this is, I don't know if cabin's the right word. Oh, it is cabin, so that's the XO cabin, it says. And on one of the tours, on the FDR tour that they have, they actually take you inside here. I think this one might have a full bathroom. I can't remember the bedrooms. Uh, it's over there, obviously. And then this is an office. So this is the XO's um, uh, where they would stay. There's lots of this kind of stuff, like um, different s really sharp stairways down to different levels. Uh, this is probably a bathroom, but um, let's see where I'm going. I guess I'm going this way. These are other officer quarters. This is a bunk. This is for two people. I don't know if there's a sign here. WSR. See, I don't know what a lot of this stuff is. Captain Abel, U.S. Navy Reserve, 1911 to 1978. Served in the Pacific Theater during World War II. So this is what this is what his quarters look like. And I think there's just a maybe like a sink or something in here. I can't remember. They don't have full bathrooms, but the bathrooms are here. So you can see they have like showers and toilets and sinks and stuff like that. Um, so a lot of these cabins, would they wouldn't have the bathrooms, but they would all share them. Some of them have their own bathrooms. Here's another one. Let's go down. You just kind of, this is a little kind of like being in a maze. Okay, you can see like that one has a sink, a sink only and a bed. It's, it's also very hot in here. And if you're in the um, South Pacific, they didn't have air conditioning in World War II. Oh, this is really interesting. So this is those projectiles and the gunpowder, so these things. That's like, there's the gunpowder right there, and that's a gunpowder container. So those things live, in, I guess three of them it looks like could live in that gunpowder container. But this is how they get this from, look how far down that goes. Like, I can't even look down there without getting dizzy, but this is one of the channels in which they would bring up these containers that contained this gunpowder, the, the smokeless gunpowder, and six of those, so two of those, big containers worth of gunpowder in order to fire one projectile. And then they have a, like a, um, what, a winch or whatever that would bring up the smokeless gunpowder from, I don't know, what is that, six levels down? I can't even tell. One, two, three, four levels down? It's hard to tell, but it's a pretty big distance. Okay, this gets us back outside. Oh, there's one more. Am I still recording? Yes, there's one more room here. Uh, this would be, is there a sign? There's no sign. So this is another room I presume is, that looks very office -y, but I presume it also has a bed. So anyway, on this tour you kind of come back out and you climb around and you go up. See, I've gone up there before, I think. Yeah, I've, I've gone up that one, so that's blocked off today. But we'll walk around this way. Um, again, I'm not going to be able to probably do the whole tour but I am going to give you a lot of it and you'll get a feel for what, and also there's just a lot of stuff you're not gonna see on the self-guided tour because, um, what is this? This is probably an area that they're using for the ship. There's a lot of volunteers here. They, they love this boat, they raise money for this boat. Okay, so when you go up these things, you, you gotta really hang on because they're steep. You can see there's all this netting around it. That probably wasn't there, but. Going down is even harder because you're supposed to turn around. Now this, this is a uh, turret number two. Now there was an explosion in 89 that ended up killing, let me see, what is the number? Um, number two, 47. Okay, so there were, remember there's 77 people that operate one turret. And this is turret number two here where there was an explosion in 1989 that killed 44 people in this turret and there's actually footage of that you can probably go online and see when that happened and this is a memorial that they have for turret number two um, but uh, I can't remember the details of the of the explosion but um, there was there there was a see there's this video here you can go online and see that that video as that happens and they put the fire out and they're pulling out sailors and but 44 people died Right here on turret number two, 1989, what is it? April 19th, 1989, and those are all the names right there of the people who perished in that uh, accident. There was a, you know, congressional investigation that was done and they came, okay. 
and they came up with I don't know. They basically they the, the they they think they first they said it was sabotage by a couple of the sailors, and then they said it wasn't. And then anyway, I'm not sure where it is today. I did look at all that stuff. I just can't remember what the full story is. Probably because I don't want to remember it because it's too horrible. All right, now this is if you go on the FDR tour, this is where FDR stayed. That's an FDR tour right there that they're on. I, I did that one, and this is. Now there's a bathroom back there. I'm going to tell you something really cool. So this is like all the dignitaries would come and they would eat at that table. And this is there's a, there's actually a kitchen. You can see like a kitchen um, window or whatever. That's where the kitchen the food would be prepared for FDR and uh, and given to him with all his all his dignitaries. Now this is the only room right here. This is the only room in the entire history of the U.S. Navy, probably the history of any Navy, I would imagine that has a bathtub on board. Inside the bathroom on this, in this room is a bathtub. And if you know anything about FDR, he was, uh, he was, could not walk. He was in a wheelchair and the, pr the press was very careful not to photograph him in a wheelchair. Uh, nonetheless, in order for him to clean himself when he was to bathe, when he was uh, um, on his way, when they were transporting him to meet with Churchill and Stalin, he was in this room here, and so they actually had to, you can kind of see it, they had to uh, open up the side of the wall here in order to get the bathtub in. And, uh, and when, uh, you know, when, when FDR was no longer needed to use this boat or be transported or anything, they just left the bathtub in there. Uh, and so this is still, this is the only boat in the history of the Navy that has a bathtub. I don't know if we can see it. Let's see. Probably not. No, it's too reflecty. Okay, I'm going back up some steps here. And this is these are the five-inch guns here, which I'll get into maybe a little later. Now, this is not on a turret. This is on more like a lazy Susan. So this this turns on its own, and there's and the people. You're, there's so many people. I've been inside one of these as well. I forget which one, but there's so many people that are inside this particular, uh, and that's, that's how you get in. It's, and it's hot, it's like, oh my God, these guys are just boiling inside of here. And there's so many of them just to make this thing work. And again, there's, there's a system that, where the projectiles are brought up into the five inch gun area, and then the, the, um, the guns are fired. And then of course you have these shells, so it has to go back down. Here's another, here's another, like you can see how many, there's just, they're everywhere, these five inch gun, uh, at turrets, they're not turrets, they're just the five inch guns that are on some kind of lazy Susan system that I'm sure is not called a lazy Susan. See, I don't know anything about this stuff. I have no vocabulary for this. Um, anyway, you just kind of end up, you, you're spending two hours walking around on this ship. They have these arrows that I'm following that uh, tell you where to go. Uh, okay, so, yep, and it changes all the time, too. So it's, it's, you gotta, you know, I've been here, I've done this tour several times, and it's not necessarily the same tour every time I get here. So, all right, this is where we're gonna start to climb. There's like a bunch of mops there, I don't know what that is. That's to swab the deck, I guess. Uh, all right, we're gonna start going up lots of these steep, steep staircases. And you just kind of follow the arrows all the way through. This is, I forget what this is. This is a ventilation shaft, a very, very deep ventilation shaft. There's all kinds of places to explore. Here's another five inch gun here that I'm overlooking. It looks like it wants to shoot the at-ats across the way. Um, okay, we'll go back in. I know I don't have a lot of time with you here. I'm not sure. I'm just going to go until the battery dies. So this is going to probably end in mid-sentence. Um, we're moving more towards the front of the ship now. We're on the port side. Port side is the left side. You can see there's like those um, lights that you use to um, signal other boats. There's a giant binocular thing that you can look through. There's these compasses. OK, so this is. They have signs, everything. I tried to, oh, this is really interesting. Okay, so this is, no, wait a minute. This is the 
armored coning tower. This is, so they have armored, there's armored, uh, I can't, no, this is not what I want to show you. There's all kinds of armaments going on here, but the whole boat is not armored because it would be too heavy. So this is the flag, the flag pilot. Oh, this is a really cool room. This looks like a movie set, just probably because of the lighting and how, um, I don't know, cloistered it is. Uh, look And look at all the 1930s, just furniture, 1930s, 1940s furniture. This literally looks like a movie set. Um, this is the, let's see, intelligence gathering compartment was available for the flag admiral and the staff to provide situational understanding for command control and communications of several ships and their mission. So... This is a group, this is these weird seats here that are, um, you know, there's like phones and seats and there's, there's like an, some kind of, what is it, like an admiral seat or something and they're, they're just sitting here, they've got this great view of everything, this side of the boat, that's the starboard side. Okay, we are going up another level. There's again some more five inch guns. Okay, going up another level. There's another one of these crazy seats. I think you can probably sit in that one because they have that cover on it, but I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Okay. Okay, here's what I wanted to show you, I think. This is the, okay, it says armored coning tower right there. And again, there are certain areas of the ship that are armored and then others that aren't. Now, the, this is armored. This is completely armored. Now, this is where you steer the boat. Right there, that's the helm. And notice, you can't see anything. You can barely see anything. Now, if you're the helmsman, you're not looking at where you're going. You can't see anything. This is it. This is your view. Now, you have these periscope things here, so you can look through those if you need to. But for the most part, you are being sent coordinates uh, in order to steer the ship. And, this, and because this is one of the most important parts of a battleship, the, the steerage, in order for the boat to go and to, um, you can see there's another periscope there. Um, because this is one of the most important areas of the boat, this is armored. So you can see there's this thick, thick, thick armoring around the helm right here. And then you have this bridge here. So like that's, because you can't really see through that. So that's, but if they're gonna look through anything, that's, I don't know if you can see through that. That's, that's all you're gonna get. That's it. So you have people here in the bridge sort of calling out the, okay, so there's turret one and turret two down below there. And there's that American flag that they painted on top of it, which was done in 2012 or something, I think, when it was first brought here. So here you have the bridge area, but this armament in, inside the bridge is where the helm is, and the helm is fully protected from attack so that you can't blow up the helm. There it is again. Okay, there's the helm again, and look how look at how thick this arm this um, armament is. It's uh, there's you know they're shut in there with this big giant door. It's like a bank vault. You're just you're not going to be able to get to those guys. So the boat can always be helmed and piloted. Okay, we're going up another level. And there's that's the top part of that's that's more. Um, armoring right there. You can just see how thick all of that. Those are the periscopes right there. There's two of them. I know that's one of the periscopes. I'm not sure where the other one goes. But that's what the helmsman is looking at. And so they have this view of the, of the ship, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can see the front of it there. It might be a little hard to make out. There are the two turrets, turret one and turret two. Turret two is the one that blew up in 1989 and killed 44 people. 44? Uh, and so that's what, if you're at the helm and you're looking through a periscope, that's what you're looking at. That's what you see. Uh, but you have this whole place is just filled with sailors that are instructing the helmsmen in the engine room. And this is how they, they coordinate. It's very, very coordinated. The interesting thing about a Navy boat, oh, this is the, what does that say? Five inch fire control system. That is what's targeting, let's see if I can get that. That's what's targeting uh, the airplanes or the ships or whatever that they're, that they're going to then send the information to the five inch guns right down there. So there's the five inch gun. So this is where they're, they're, they're targeting their targets 
and they're sending that information. That's actually, they're not sending it to the five inch guns. It's, there's, a, there's a room, there's a computer room in the middle of the boat, which you can get to on the gun tour. And it's fantastic that you see where all of that information is gathered in a 1930s, 1940s um, computer system. And then that's all calculated out. And those coordinates are then sent to the five inch guns and the five inch, gun, five inch guns are then fired. Uh, I think they're fired from inside those five inch gun compartments. Uh, the big giant guns are fired, so the 16 inch guns are fired not from the turrets, but from the middle of the boat. There's actually these things that look like um, old fashioned 1800s, like six shooter gun handles that they, that they pull the trigger on, just like a trick, just like a handgun um, or a revolver. And that's what fires the big, 16 inch cannons uh okay oh this thing this is interesting this is a big gatling gun now this was put on in the 80s this big gatling gun here uh and that's called r2d2 because star wars had come out or had been out so if it's in the 80s star wars came out in 77 but they have these gatling guns that you can also go online and just look at how like crazy those things are i don't even i mean they fire so much just so fast and so many bullets at one time that it's you're just like yeah nothing's going to survive that okay so as an example getting back down uh what is this here i don't know what this is getting back down so it says like steep stairs here so i'm going to turn around not everyone does but this is what they taught us on the tour um oh i'm going to show you this we're going to get to this in a little bit see there's boats and stuff going by it's really cool here those are like tomahawk or harpoon missiles or something and they have one that's all that's open but those were put in on the 80s during the cold war and those are just full on tomahawk and, and other missiles. These are also, this is also going to fire something. These are, I don't know what these things are. There's probably a sign around here somewhere, but um, all right. So here's what you got to do with the, these steep stairs going back down. You got to turn around, grab the handle like this and go backwards. See, we're going backwards down the steps. Otherwise you're going to fall and break your neck and you don't want to do that. I'm still following the arrows. I go, okay, I got to go down another one. So I'm going to turn around, go backwards. This is kind of hard to do one handed with a selfie stick. And okay, here we go. I'm going this way. I am just following the arrows. See, this feels different from what last week that I was here. So this was this change. It kind of feels like this was changed. Now, these are the. I'm walking by the big Tomahawk missiles. There's the five, there's five inch guns right there. There's the gangplank that it took to get on board. And so yeah, these are, I'll read the sign. Okay, there's the, you can see in the distance, there's the open Tomahawk. One of those is like harpoon, I think they're called harpoon missiles or something that shoot out. And then there's the Tomahawk ones or something. I, I couldn't tell you the difference between the two. They just blow everything up. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what blows up what or which one is more powerful. I have no idea. But I'll read, I'll read you the sign when I get to it. But you can see that th there's four in each one of those containers right there. That, that thing is on a giant system that lifts up. You can go on YouTube and, and look at how those operate. But that, that thing sort of shoots up in the air, and then those things get, they fi they get fired one at a time. Um, all right, this is, these are short steps, so I'm just going to go forward down these and hope I don't break my neck. Okay, so that's it. AFT missile deck, Iowa armament in the 80s. That's sort of explained. Okay, so you can see that this is the Tomahawk launcher right there. So that's the Tomahawk. That's, how, that's what it does. It kind of lifts up like that. That whole thing opens, and then, and then it fires. There we go. Okay, it fires out of that thing. So this is the Tomahawk. You can kind of see through to the other side right there. So there's four tomahawks. So that thing lifts up and then those get fired out. And you can see there's a bunch of them on that. This is we're towards, we're sort of amidships, I guess, kind of amidships headed towards the back. But there's all these tomahawks. And then these are the, the other ones, whatever I said, the other one, harpoons or something. There's going to, oh, wait, here we go. Yeah, harpoon cruise, cruise missile. Okay, here we go. Harpoon cruise missile launchers. So that's what those look like, those things. And that's what that is. That's the, those are the harpoons, and that's for the tomahawks right there. And there's ton, like, look, there's like more tomahawks. There's everywhere, these things. And then the har more harpoons on the back. That's, and there's a harpoon. 
There's what that harpoon looks like, except I can't figure out how that fits in one of those tubes. I was sitting there because I don't understand the, how the fins fit into those tubes. So I don't know. Maybe you can figure it out. I can't. Um, and you can see here's more tomahawk. Uh, I don't know what to call these things. More tomahawks. There's four in each of those. What's that? So that there's all kinds of um, uh, announcements and stuff that go on here. Okay, we're gonna go down. Now we're gonna go inside the ship, I think, or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna turn around, go backwards. Okay, there's people looking at the tomahawks. Um, there's a windlass, some kind of windlass right there. That's some kind of rope, some, uh, what are they called? Sidelines, that's not what they're called, but um, other lines that they connect when they dock a ship. All right. And more steep stairs. So I went all the way up and all the way down. Look at, okay, see, look at that. Look how steep that is. Yeah, that's like nearly vertical. All right, so I'm going backwards. Now this is here, here's a, here's a five inch gun right there. This is one of the areas below it that you can see the projectiles, there they are. There's people in here and see they're coming up from this thing from, some, from, a, from somewhere a level below and they're lifting them with their arms and then they, I can't sort of get around, but they're putting them in there. That gets hoisted up to along with gunpowder. Uh, I don't know where the gunpowder is, but it's here somewhere. And that is then being hoisted up into this thing and then those are loaded into those cannons and then the um, that whole room rotates and the, the cannons go up and down whatever it is the coordinates are that they're sent and then they fire they fire I think and I think they fire them from there now it could be fired from somewhere else but I think they're fired from there okay this this is where this is really cool this is where and remember, if you're in the South Pacific, it's so hot that you're probably going to go sleep on deck somewhere. But this is where all of the bunks are, and these are more these are the more modern bunks. I'll show you a picture of what it used to look like. These are the more these are the nicer bunks. In fact, they have um, like for I guess like summertime, you can have school kids will come and stay on a battleship, and this is they'll pick a bunk I guess and sleep here. Those straps are there because if the boat rolls, you don't want to fall out of the bed but you can see that they have they now this is all this was all done for Korea or the 80s I can't remember for the Cold War um, this is a really nice configuration compared to what it was and I'll try to find the picture look at that so you know it's all it's all open you have these curtains so you have some privacy if you want to call it that and um, so they're just kind of all stacked on top of each other it's funny because these all say firm there's just say firm um, they did put air conditioning in here, so this had air conditioning for the Cold War, but um, see now there's a picture somewhere of, the, of these bunks of what this looked like. It was like five, so you can see these are three tall each. Oh, here we go, here we go. Look at that, so that's, so you can see like they're, they're three tall each, but then like in World War II, that's how they slept. And it was just like, it wasn't a, ma a mattress that said firm, it was just like a cot, like an army cot. And there's like five guys on top of each other like that. So um, they took all of that out and they put in these more uh, comfortable, if you want to call them that. So anyway, I don't know what's over here. This is, we're getting towards the mess hall now. Um, you can see that there's, we're starting to see uh, signs of tables that you might sit and eat at. Um, and there's all kinds of, there's just stuff, I've explored a lot of this, I can't really remember it. There's the, the thought, there's another picture of the, the types of beds. That actually looks like there's a mattress on it, so it's not just a cot, I, I don't know. Um, so you just get to kind of wander around this battleship. And there's still, okay, I gotta go back, look at that, look, at, look how steep that, that's crazy. Look how steep, can you see that, how steep that is? All right, I gotta go backwards. They keep. They say over and over again. There's so many ways to hurt yourself on on a battleship. 
And when you go on those gun tours, you see what they're talking about. Um, there's more displays, there's some more sleeping quarters. Uh, there's just all kinds of just displays of the people that were on board this ship. This is this is some guy. This is Bobby Scott, BMC. See, I don't. I, I wish I could read all this. Commander, Master Chief, Petty Officer. So this was his quarters here. Um, there's a there's a sink, but that's it, and a bed. But you know, compared to those bunk beds, this is pretty nice. And we're getting towards the mess hall. This is what's really cool. Are these old machines. They they don't work obviously, but they kept them here. You know, they have candy from the 80s. It's probably the original candy, I'm guessing, and a change machine. This is a museum room. Keep my, oh yeah, there's a bunch of people in there. There's a kind of museum room in there. They have like original uniforms and helmets and jackets and equipment and stuff that you can kind of go read about. We're starting to get into the mess hall and get a glimpse of it here, uh, but we're going to walk. Okay, something happened. Would I stopped the video somehow. I'm not actually sure that the microphone's still connected. It says it is. Okay. I did something. I did something that stopped it. But that's okay. All right. Let's go down to the mess hall, which is around the corner. Okay, and they have all these exposed electronics you can kind of see. I mean, this is, again, this is all 1930s. Well, this is, has been updated. It's not 1930s, but it's sort of the same idea. Oh, there's the era. I'm kind of lost. They have these things, these different levels that you can go down. That's all armed. That, that's just, yeah, an armed hat, armed hatch, it says. Uh, I don't know. Those look like they would be bunks again, but I, I don't know. Um, so you're brought into this kitchen area, and this is all the original. I mean, it's stuff they used in the 80s as well, but like that's from the 1930s, that bread-making machine right there. I know that because of the tours I've been on. And this is, what is this? The bread room. Okay, this is the bread room. This is where bread was made. It's a bread slicer, I guess. And um, okay. Oh, here's the here's the menu. Uh, where it says MD MDRT, it says like lunch, dinner, and then MDRT. I can't remember what that stands for. I'd have to look it up now. But it was something mid something something. I don't know. Dinner leftovers. I love that. This is, oh, this is the Marine Guard. So there were Marines on board, and this was where they would keep their armaments right there. If you can see that, those are all like M16s or whatever. But this was locked, and this was, there's uh, gun magazines there on the table. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, but that's the Marine Guard station. I can get that. And um, if something happened and they need to run and get their m now there are these fake guys here that talk to you. Next. He said next. And then that's their fake food they're serving, which is corn and french fries and macaroni and cheese and some kind of bean salad and ham and biscuits. Oh, this is the, what was this? This is the electronic calibration laboratory right off the kitchen here. So see, they restore all this stuff. This is part of what they do in their museum. What is that? This is what they do. They, they find like original equipment. People donate original equipment. Um, there's a lot of volunteers that uh, work here and they help do all the research and all the restoration. This is a meat and vegetable preparation room, as you can see, because there's a handy sign there telling us. Look at those original Coca-Cola canisters right there. So you see they try to get original pieces that you know, would have been here. There is a gift shop here, which we'll walk through if, if we have enough time on this video. There's, this is all stuff I remember from being a kid in the 1970s, like in school and stuff. That's a milk machine. I remember that from summer camp, that thing, from Tuolumne Camp up uh, on the South Fork of the Tuolumne River by Yosemite. Here's another eating area. 
Th these tables were put in for the 1980s. They weren't there originally. It kind of in, in the 1980s, it was fast food style. So th these are like what you would see, um, you know, like at a Burger King, kind of that same idea, or McDonald's or something in the 1980s. It's that same style. And they put those in. So, yeah, this is the big giant mess hall. Uh, more food prep, more mess hall stuff. And this gets us to the, I don't know where this gets us to. Exit, and, okay, so there's a, do I go this way? No, exit, okay. Tour continues, there we go. So this gets us into, there's all kinds of, um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on these. If you come to visit the USS Iowa, and you should, this is really great, uh, a great way to spend an afternoon or a few hours anyway. So this is, this is where they're talking about the Turret 2 explosion. There's a whole sort of exhibit. This is, one of the sailors had these two books in, uh, in, his, in his locker, uh, Getting Even, The Complete Book of Dirty Tricks, and Improvised Munitions Handbook. And so there was this idea that it was done deliberately and uh, by one of the sailors, and then later that was disproven. Yeah, theories, conclusions, so there's this whole exploration. Oh, by the way, there's one of the gunpowder. This is the interior, that's what's inside the gunpowder sacks that you see, and that thing, that ignition, that is the primer right there. So that's black powder that blows up this stuff, which is the smokeless gunpowder, which is made up of all these different like pellets, and, uh, but it's ignited with that thing. So this is all about, yeah, this is all about turret two. And they, the, you can see the footage here of it blowing up and there's, you know, doors and things that, it's pretty terrible. Different gears and they have a song that plays that they wrote for this. And these are just all these museum exhibits. And that's the USS, that's the USS Missouri, that's B-63, I'm on B-61, but this is a model of the Missouri, which is an Iowa-class ship, so it's basically the same ship. And so you can spend a lot of time looking around the different museum exhibits. They're, they're planning, I think they're planning to do a whole bunch of this kind of stuff, which is, it's interesting. I, yeah, there's some kind of interesting stuff here. Um, that's what the inside of one of these 16-inch guns look like right there. Uh, that was that was from another ship that was going to be tossed out, and someone managed to get a section of it so you could see what the inside looked like. That that thing cleans that. They would shove that in there to, to kind of clean the the, the grooves or that's fluted, so you can see uh, that that would probably need some cleaning from time to time. I don't know what's down here. So anyway, yeah, they have just a lot of museum exhibit type of stuff. And now we're going to go into the gift shop. Oh, this is like a little first aid area here. I'm a little unclear on what that is. There's a lot of unfinished stuff here because they're still raising money and trying to, trying to, uh, you know, really restore this ship. Um, I'm not. I'm definitely not going to spend too much time on the gift shop. But if you want anything USS Iowa related or Iowa class related or whatever, um, it's here. And we're hearing, I think that's David Lee Roth singing California Girls at the moment. Okay. I don't want to bother these people. Just stuff like this. Like, what is this? I don't have no idea, but that's, I mean, that's obviously from the 1930s. There's also like a, this Veterans Resource Center. I think I went in here on one of the tours, but they have different areas for people to check out. Um, I'm trying to let these people go up the ladder. Let's see what this is. This looks like more kitchen stuff? I don't know. This looks very kitchen-y to me. Let's see if I can get up the ladder. Okay, so this is talking about the speed of this ship and the size of this ship. So uh, USS Iowa, 887 feet and 3 inches. 
Um, it's not quite the size of the Empire State Building. Empire State Building is 1,250 feet. And in 1940, the original cost of the USS Iowa was 100 million. In 2010 dollars, the cost would be 1,537,000. It took 400,000 pounds of paint used to cover the Iowa, enough paint to cover a five foot high fence that is 273 miles long. The Iowa could store 84 tons of meat on board or the equivalent of 336 cows. How powerful, the, each engine on the Iowa could produce 53,000 horsepower or the same amount produced by 154 Chevy Corvettes. To run those engines, the Iowa carried 2,582,000 gallons of fuel, enough to fill the gas tanks of 129,100 Chevy Corvettes. All right, we're gonna go up the ladder. There's a, there's a turret, ow, just hit my head. See, you can hurt yourself on this boat 20,000 ways. Okay, that, that's turret number three. This is actually the end of the tour. So, looks like, a, oh, there's a, I think that's a Huey helicopter. It says H-U-I, so does that mean Huey or H-U-1? Oh, I really hurt, hit my head on that thing. Um, yeah, so there's one of these B-copters with the two, you know, propellers right there that you can kind of walk around and look at. Actually, in fact, let's go do that. We're at the back of the boat, and we'll end here. There's a, uh, the only place on board where you can get something neat is this Vicky's Doghouse. Vicky, of course, again, was that dog. You see the dog, there's Vicky right there. So people will take a picture of the Iowa, the USS Iowa mascot, Vicky. And, um, but we're gonna walk around and go see, I haven't flipped this around for a while. We're gonna walk around and see the, um, that, that bee copter that uh, we, we just saw. You can get a little closer to it and um, but this is really the end of the tour. I, I did that quickly. There's a lot of stuff to kind of stop and read, but again, I did do all of the tours, so I sorta could sound like I know what I'm talking about, but I, I really don't. Um, there's still a lot of exploration I could do here, even though I've, I've uh, gone on the tours. And plus, I'd go on the gun tour again and the engineering tour. And, um, just to, just to really sort of like get a better picture of, of this whole thing. And uh, this is, I don't think they call it a hue. I think they called it something else, but here, let me flip it around. This is all restored. Well, we did it one Saturday a month. Okay. Here we go. This is the, I haven't seen the interior of it. That's pretty cool. That's really rickety, wow. I bet that's loud too. Look at like what you're sitting on, just this cloth seat. So there's not, let's go to the, here's the front. There's where the pilots sit. Right there, I can't see what I'm looking at, but this is where they're sitting, piloting this vehicle that's been restored. That's what it looks like. It, it kind of seems smaller than, maybe this is just a small version. I don't, I don't really know. Um, but pretty cool that they have that here. So that's the tour. I'm going to take you to the back of the boat. I'm going to go back and then go to the back of the boat. I probably don't need to go this direction. Again, there's turret number three right there. And then you can see the five inch guns. There used to be a lot more five inch guns, but then they put in those Tomahawk, what installations or whatever and they removed some of the five inch guns. Now I got here, this place opens at 10 a.m. At least it did today, I think it does every day. And I wanted to get, oh look, I can, you can kind of get in. Now, if you go online, here, let's see if I, can, if I can show you inside of the turret. So there's inside of the turret. That, that doesn't really give you much of a good idea of what it's like. Uh, you can see it a, a little bit, but um, it's pretty cool when you go inside. It's and you you just you can't imagine all the people that it took to run that thing, and some of them are standing on these platforms that are very narrow that they they had to have been belted into somehow because if you take a wrong step you're falling like 20 feet 30 feet to your death. I mean there's just it's so not safe. It's incredible. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna you can get uh, hot dogs here. They're like gourmet sausages this Vicky's doghouse so it's hot dogs um, 
and they have, you know, fried stuff and drinks and whatever. It's kind of expensive, but it's pretty good. I've got I've gotten some of their food here and I wasn't disappointed. You can get alcohol if you really want to. Um, so there's all the different sausages you can get and french fries and onion rings and tater tots and mini corn dogs. You can get a destroyer style. That's with kettle chips. Uh, so they also, they, there's, there's usually a lot of events here that are going on. I've seen many ceremonies and events and I guess like weddings or something. I don't really know, but there's this stage area here that you can rent out for some event that you want to have on board here. And they'll set it up for you. I've seen this whole area looking really pretty spectacular. We are at the back of the boat. I'm going to take you to the back. And show you what that looks like. There's not much here. There's just a lot of wind, like like windlasses, and are they windlasses? Yeah, they would have to be. And um, lines that they're connecting the boat to. There's the flag, and there's the bridge in the background, and more of those um, container ship uh, container ship container cranes. But we are at the back of the boat um, there's an air conditioning unit so I'm assuming that was installed in the 1980s and uh, yeah so we're at the very back and I'm going to kind of wrap this up now looks like we got pretty much the whole tour before the battery ran out which is good um, So there are full two-hour tours that people have done that are on YouTube. You can go. I looked at a few of those. Well, one primarily, but then a bunch of other videos. And uh, those were pretty informative. You can watch those. They also have, you can go to their website. Uh, I don't know what the website address is, but just do a Google search for USS Iowa Museum. And uh, they have, you can do a virtual tour. Um, which is pretty cool and they actually have pictures inside the turrets and you can kind of go around all the different areas in the turrets and I, I looked at those. I found it hard to navigate actually and kind of gave up to be honest with you but I, you know, I just didn't, I don't know, maybe I was tired. But um, it's, it, it's just, it's not the same. I had already done the gun tour. I wanted to see what the, what the virtual gun tour looked like or just the virtual tour. I wanted to see if it was the same as the self-guided tour and I found it wasn't. You really kind of need to come here uh, and do this yourself and you really need to sort of see it and experience it in person um, there's really nothing like this I don't know if there's battleships near you now by the way there's a, um, a maritime museum in San Diego that uh, has a, um, an aircraft carrier I think it's maybe it's the Nimitz I don't really know and it has a submarine and other ships it has it has tall ships I think you can go sailing on one of them, which I'd like to do. And uh, I want to spend a couple days there on, on that Maritime Museum, uh, which is going to be a little bit like this. But there's really not a lot here. There's not a lot like this. There's not a lot that's been preserved this way. There's still, as I said, there's a lot. they have a lot of distance to cover to really get this ship back to where they want it to be. And they, you know, they talk about all the building that they're doing and all the um, restoration and they part of it you know the ticket was 30 bucks 29 bucks whatever it was and um, all of that really goes towards the restoration so I've been in the tours and all that sort of stuff so I've, I've you know done it done all of that and get and paid for all those tickets so I think all of that goes to restoration if you come down here you're contributing to the restoration of, of this boat as well the ship um, but it's also surprisingly really interesting and it's interesting to see all this 1930s technology and 1940s technology it's uh and and just the fact that there's whatever it is 77 people on one turret in order to fire